Targets identified. Threat assessed. The raid is on. Specialist cybercrime officers fan out through a slum north of Manila. A warren of narrow alleys, controlled by gangs. The team's nervous. Officers are targeting a new kind of crime here. It's called sextortion. They're looking for computer equipment and the criminals who operate it, blackmailing men thousands of miles away on the other side of the world. They raid six addresses, searching for evidence. Use the Wi-Fi, use. They use the Wi-Fi. But the suspects are gone, moments before. Rice is still cooking on the stove. Just ran away, carrying all the laptops. Near. So you missed them by minutes? Yes, missed by minutes. It is trying to find some clients from abroad and then trying to seduce them. We do find Rosa. She used to be involved in sextortion, but claims to have given it up. It was hard for me. I'm not used to doing bad things. My conscience got to me. I was ashamed. Online sexual blackmail is on the increase and is a key target for the National Cybercrime Unit. In the forensic lab, officers search hard drives for evidence. Criminals target men online, posing as young women. They use fake videos to trick victims into explicit webcam chats. Those chats are recorded and then the threats start to make the recording public unless the victim pays up. Once the victims uh, pay, uh, they will ask for more, for more money. 15 pieces. Over the last year, this unit has carried out three major operations, seizing hundreds of computers and making a series of arrests. This is the receipt from the Western Union. Each one of these yeah. is someone who's paid money, yes, and, paid money and been a victim of sextortion. Yes. The head of the unit says these gangs are making millions. Pages and pages of victims. Yes. Scammers can make hundreds of pounds a day. Access to the internet is cheap and easy in the Philippines, and this crime is now happening on an industrial scale. Officers from the country's cybercrime unit raid a call centre. They find young people working in shifts, targeting victims using social media. There are even bonuses for the workers who make the most money. But how exactly does this new crime work? A friend request online. She's attractive and suggests a more intimate chat on a webcam. I was very frightened, just the thought. As John found out, that chat is recorded, followed by a threat to put the video online unless the victim pays up. She'd tell my family and friends, tell my daughter, tell my wife, you know, ruin your life, ruin your family. If anybody was looking at me now on Skype uh, through video, that's what they would see. What victims don't know is most of the women aren't real, just pre-recorded videos programmed to obey commands. If she said hello, you could say, OK, you know, I'll wave to you. There you go, there's a wave. Wayne runs a support group for victims and gets thousands of requests for help. So far today, we've had 10, two, one, two. Three, the scammers, he says, are ruthless. I don't think they care. I really don't think they care what happens, just so long as they get that money. You know, they'll tell people, I'm going to ruin your life, I'm going to make you famous. They'll say anything to them, don't care about the consequences. Victims like Daniel Perry from Dunfermline in Scotland. Just 17, he took his own life last year after threats of blackmail. In a crowded slum, down an alleyway, the shack where those threats came from. Police say three men were responsible. From this place, the three men contacted Daniel Perry. They extorted him, they bullied him. Now, I've seen the full transcript of what was said and it's simply too distressing to broadcast. What we know is that Daniel begged them not to put the video online. They said, you will see the effing video on YouTube. He asked them again not to do it and they wrote to him, commit suicide now because your family will know this. A few hours later, he did. We tracked down one of the suspects, Vincent Bravo, now out on bail. You and your friends 
are responsible for this man's death. I didn't do it. I don't know anything about it. They have no hard evidence against us. And here's another, Jomar Palacio. He's also on bail. Do you recognize this man? This is Daniel Perry. You and your friends extorted money from him and then told him to kill himself. Both men say they had nothing to do with Daniel Perry's death, but police insist they will stand trial. Justice here is notoriously slow, and Daniel Perry's case may take years to get to court. Police are targeting the trade, but most victims are too embarrassed to come forward, leaving the criminals hidden in the anonymity of the internet and the sprawling slums of Manila. Angus Crawford, BBC News in the Philippines.